Today I will be teaching you guys perhaps the most famous build in StarCraft, the Proxy Rax. This build has definitely won over a million dollars for Terrans at this point. Most famously when Maru used Proxy Rax to win $200,000 against Dark. At some point in the series he fouled himself 3-2 down. Uh, to which he responded by using Proxy Rax two games in a row and winning the grand prize. Pro gamers used to joke that Maru won 30k per barracks as he ended up bagging 120k more than Dark. I'll teach you guys three different versions, starting from the easiest, ending with the most complicated. Even if you're interested in just one specific version, I do recommend you sit through all three because there's different details about each version that you will definitely mess up if you don't catch them. If you do like the content, make sure to let me know in the comments and by subscribing to the channel. Let's do it. The first Proxy Rax version I'm going to teach you guys is the Proxy 4 Rax. Proxy 4 Rax is by far the easiest build. I think it's one of the easiest builds Terran has in general. Um, you send out an SCV right away, you do that with every Proxy Rax version. Now this build, um, yeah, it can literally beat anyone as you can see I'm demonstrating here by beating Serral. And you might wonder if it's so easy and it can beat everyone, then what is the downside? Well, the downside of this build is that there is absolutely no follow-up if your opponent does a pull first or a one base opener. Or even sacrifices the natural and goes on one base, you will probably lose. Now, this build does have some room for mistakes. Like here, I actually made a mistake myself. I made my depot like five seconds late and I made one extra SCV. The timings for this, if you want to do the build properly, are incredibly simple. It is 13, 13, 13, 13. So uh, you get a depot at 13, a barracks at 13, the second barracks at 13, and the third barracks at 13 supply. Here, I accidentally made one SCV before, so that's already my mistake. Uh, and what you're going to do with this build is there's honestly almost no strategy involved. You're going to make four barracks here. You're going to save up marines for the exact right timing and go for it. Now the other proxy racks have a lot more detail to them. But this build is honestly super simple. You cannot really mess it up strategy wise. Um, and yeah, sometimes you do rely on luck a little bit. Try to adapt this to your own meta. Uh, one thing you do with this build is you make three barracks. Then you make one more SCV. And then a fourth barracks. That's usually how you do that build. So you would go... 13 depot, 13 barracks, 13 barracks, 13 barracks, then one SCV and one marine, and then 15 barracks. Now keep in mind, I only have three SCVs here, okay? Even though you do a proxy 4x, you only need three SCVs. And I can even explain you the math of this. Um, for proxy 4 racks, you need 11 SCVs at home. So if you get confused with the timings of the barracks, just you can try to figure it out yourself. Just make sure you have 11 SCVs mining at home and three SCVs doing the proxy, and you're already good to go. You see, I'm going to make one Marine here. Normally, you would make one SCV now, but I'm not going to do it because I already built it. And I'm going to make that fourth barracks over here. Now, since the Proxy 4X is 100% all in, you do not want to show your Marines. The entire strategy of this build is to wait for the perfect time and then go with a small group of Marines. After you finish the second barracks, you're going to use this SCV to make a depot. Uh, there's no gas or anything, no orbital. Definitely do not make an orbital. You will come short on minerals. Uh, one small tip I can give you that I didn't do. This depot, you can pretty much just make it next to your CC to avoid loss. Like I said, there's no follow-up. If your opponent is doing pool first or anything, you will probably lose anyway. So you might as well save the money and build it here. Um, and yeah, save yourself that, you know, little bit of walking distance. Might as well make the depot a few seconds faster. So here you go. When you're going to go is when you have five Marines exactly. So I have five Marines, then I'm going to go. And you're not going to pull SCVs with this. If you look at my money, it's pretty tight. Exactly the 11 minerals on SCVs uh, Evan, SCVs on minerals is what I need. And then I'm going to pressure. Now, this is kind of what happens. The Overlord is usually late. The Zerg's Donald Drone Scout, so you can get in here. Now he's going to know. And what the Zerg should do here is go into the main and defend their main base. If they defend their natural, I think you should pretty much always win. And I think defending the natural is a very natural thing to do for a Zerg. So even though this strategy is 100% all-in, you obviously do still want to micro back. If like drones are coming, if zerglings are coming, you don't just want to stand there and fight them. Marines are good when they're micro, not when they stand still. And this is the hardest part of the build. As you can see, there is basically no strategy involved, but you do need to kite those marines. This is the biggest skill. Now, if you pay attention to the supply here, the only time you would pull your SCVs is when you reach the cap. So you see I'm losing a few marines here, I lose SCVs. So I can keep making marines. If let's say he makes a spine crawler here. And it actually finishes and I have to go back. Then you would pull SCVs when you have enough money to max out on marines basically. I'm to the 31 supply. Now here is going very well. Like I said he's defending his natural. And you make so many marines. I have 13 marines against 10 zerglings. Like this build has an insane amount of marines. And you really just want to all in. Uh, even if the zerg goes into the main base. Just so we get it 100% straight. 
even if the Zerg gives up the natural, goes into the main base, makes spine, you still need to try and break it because you will lose. I know it's easy to say, but Terran one base is, is better than a Zerg one base, right? But the problem is you have no gas. You need to fly all your barracks home. You have no orbital even. So your situation is tragic. Never. And maybe if, maybe if the Zerg is on two drones or something. Okay, let's say if it's really extreme, the Zerg is on one or two drones left, then you can try to transition. But 99% of the time you have to go into the main and finish the game off just like that. And that's pretty much what I'm doing. You see, I've reached 31 supplies. So I'm actually pulling the SCVs. I did end up losing a few Marines. So I could have kept them at home to make more. And you can also see as soon as I pulled them, I was never able to make a Marine again. All right, that was the easiest version. Now let's move on to the Proxy 3-Rex. So this version of the build is already a little bit more complicated. It's not quite as difficult as the Proxy 2-Rex, but it is has a little bit more strategy to it. The Proxy 2-Rex is pretty much a macro build at this point. Like you never want to kill someone with it. If it does happen, it's kind of a fluke. Proxy 4-Rex is always all in and Proxy 2-Rex is a little bit in between. You usually have to make a decision between all inning or between macroing behind it. Depends on how much damage you do. The timings are also slightly different. Like remember with the Proxy 4-Rex, you want to go for 13 barracks, 13 barracks, etc. Here, you're usually going to go for 15, 15, 15. Now, there are some adaptations you can make. You can, for example, play 14, 14, 14 to make it more extreme of an all-in. And there are very subtle differences in these builds. With a Proxy 3-Rex, for example, you always want to show your first Marine because you want to bait the opponent to the low ground. With the Proxy 4-Rex, you're hidden. And I'm going to show you a very important detail that you cannot forget when you play the Proxy 3-Rex, okay? And the biggest detail here is that the third barracks always needs to be hidden. Proxy 3-Rex is a massive mind game. Let me explain you why. Against the Proxy 2-Rex, you 100% want to defend your natural as Zerg. If you let your natural die against the Proxy 2-Rex, you're just very far behind. Against the Proxy 3-Rex, it's kind of the opposite. You usually, it's better to do a one-race response, either go for spines or get a roach warrant down, and that's a very good response. So here... Elaser is going to scout two barracks while the third barracks is really far away. Uh, just to be sure, guys, normally the barracks would be something like here. But Milky Cow, in this case, he was afraid the Overlord would see it or the drone. So he built it really far away. Normally, you would make it a little bit closer. Or maybe like behind this would have been nice behind the line of sight blockers. And then you're just going to make Marines. Now, with a proxy 3 racks, if your opponent goes into the main, you would actually transition yourself as well. Like you would add gases. With this version, you do actually get your orbital. You basically get your orbital instead of the Ford Barracks, and you have more SCVs. Now here, Milky needs to be very careful to not draw the drones to his third Barracks. Um, but if you do a lot of damage, or if you do not enough damage, you can also consider pulling your SCVs with this. Oh no, he's actually going to lose an SCV. That's painful. And he's actually sending this SCV back. This is another detail that's important. If you show this SCV, keep, it, keep in mind, guys, I I'm pausing because I really want to explain this. You always want to adapt the strategies to your own MMR. There's a lot of these details that Zerks at your level might simply not get. The, the reason he's sending his SCV back is because if he shows up with another SCV, Elaser knows there's another barracks. If you think your Zerks will not pick up on that, just bring the SCV along. Get another bunker down, right? And that is just, yeah, this is a pro-level game. This was actually, this is a game from a big qualifier. That's why I wanted to show this one. I'm also going to show Milky's 2 racks game as an example for the next one because he had some really nice proxy games. So here you see he's going to bunker down Marines. He hasn't made a gas yet because he's not sure uh, if he wants to all in or not. It really depends on the amount of damage he's going to do. Now here, he went a little bit far forward. Marines in general, pretty much with any of these builds... Marine is a snowball unit in this case. You always want to get to the deadly mass of Marines. So this trade somehow went really well, but it was still, he definitely overextended. He was a little bit too far forward. Would have been nice to stay off the creep at least. And now he's lost his SEVs. And with this amount of damage, you simply cannot transition. So Milky is going to be pulling his SEVs. Remember with this version, you do actually have the mule. So you can pull the SEVs and the Ford Marines at the same time. But obviously once you get this going, there is no hope of transitioning at all. Even if your opponent is on five drones, you're probably going to lose. Uh, so keep that in mind. Although five drones against one mule is probably still somewhat winnable, right? Uh, if Milky did more damage in this game, he would have added the gases. He would have gotten a factory. Probably one important thing to note before we get to the, the end blow, the final blow. If you do transition from this, keep in mind that you do have to make a bunker at the natural. Because your opponent is very likely to counter with something like... Could even be roaches, could be zerglings. And if you do not have a bunker, naked marines without upgrades are really not going to fare that well. Here you go. Milky actually has a little bit more supply. Normally I, I use the 31 supply even for SCV pulls with this. 
Now, very commonly you would find a spine crawler. You would always use the SCVs to tank. And if you can, try to focus fire the queens that have transfuses. Now, none of these actually have a transfuse. So that's not coming into play. You see Elaser is pulling the ones with the transfuse bag as well. That's really good micro. But if you can, target the ones down with transfuse. And please, guys, even though this looks the same as the last game... Please note all the details that I've mentioned that with this build you can actually transition that with the three racks you have to show your marines and put on pressure as opposed to the four racks where you really go at the perfect timing with all at once when you have five marines. Those are really important differences. Don't mess those up. And here we have the proxy two racks, the most famous one, by far the most interesting one as well. If you commit to doing a proxy two racks, guys, uh, sometimes you will kill your opponent, to be fair. Even if they're pros, doesn't matter. Sometimes you will kill them. It, it just happens. But if you play a proxy two racks, the strategy shifts away from the opening build order a little bit. When you do this build, you're going to have to start thinking about the follow-up. And there's so many things possible. A few things that I can mention is Maru, for example, the best Terran in the world. Very frequently, he would follow up two racks with a Battlecruiser. I think the most common follow-up ever is to follow it up with a Hellion drop. And there's so many different things you can do. The timings here are usually 15-15. I think some people do like a super economic version where you go for 16-16, but I think... You know, you still need to do damage. Even if there's a follow-up, you're not doing a two rack just to walk around and meme. You know, you definitely don't want to do some damage. So I prefer the 15-15 version like Milky is doing. Now, usually, uh, you don't get the gas straight away. That's, I'm not sure if Milky does it. Yeah, Milky does do it. But typically, you get your gas at 17 because it has the best flow of the minerals to gas ratio. Uh, as you can see, Milky uh, does it at 16 and Milky is an insane Terran player. So you can also do that. But if you want to get the perfect timings, the most optimized builds, you would go for the 15-15 barracks and then for the 17 refinery. Now, with the, with the two racks, you don't really have to go in instantly all the way. This is also the reason why this build is considered the best of the, of the three versions. Because you don't need to do an infinite amount of damage. You're not in a rush to really get in there. Very often, how you will do it is you make a bunker here. You bait the Zerg to bring their drones. You kite back, kill some drones. And then the rush is over and you back off and you transition. Maybe you can snag an Overlord on the way. Um, and a version I personally like to do is to make a bunker really far away. So I would make the bunker here and the Zerg usually does not want to commit that deep. And then the second bunker is here in range of the hatchery and then they're going to have to commit, but you have a bunker up and those are all versions you can do. If you like to be creative, if you'd like to play around with different proxy racks versions, proxy two racks is definitely your thing. Uh, and it's also the reason why it's the build you see the most often. Now you can see the cash flow problem I'm talking about. Milky has enough gas for the factory, but he didn't have enough minerals yet. And that's why the 17 gas uh, is so nice. He would have been able to start a little bit faster. Now this is the whole point of the rush. Elaser's coming out with the drones because you cannot lose the hatchery. And then Milky's going to do his best to target as many drones as he can. As you can see in the worker count, even though it's proxy against non-proxy, Milky's already ahead by a few. Now obviously Elaser has two bases against one. But the damage being done is already very good here. Especially if the spine finishes. Against the two racks, you don't even need a spine. And, uh, you know, opposed to the other builds where you really wanted to do damage, as you can see here. This damage is already enough. I think he's killed eight Zerglings. He's killed five drones. Um, and this is already fine. Like, I wouldn't say it's the best trade ever. If Elasia cancels this spine. Okay, now the spine finished. I would give a small lead to Milky. Because that spine is huge. And now something. Uh, this is another decision to be made here. You can fly both your barracks back or a very popular move, one that I really like to do is I like to scout with the barracks because a barracks dies very slowly to two queens. You can easily check the gas timings, check if there's a roach warrant, check the drone count. Um, and this, once again, it depends on the follow up. The follow up you have planned beforehand is going to decide what you do. If you want to go for a simple Hellion drop, the flying barracks is a fantastic move. And the reason is. You can scout how much gas there has been mined on this extractor. If, if Milky would have flown in with the barracks, he would see that speed is not going to be finished by the time the Hellion drop hits, making the Hellion drop extremely powerful. If you see that the laser would actually have had mined enough gas, you could cancel the Hellion drop, go for a 30C instead, because he invested into link speed instead of mining more money, and etc. So this build, especially if you decide to scouting, your follow-up should always be very good. Now you can see very late third hatch timing, of course. And if you're anywhere close to the worker count of Zerg as Terran, you're pretty happy. Now you can see Milky Cow is actually going for a Hellion drop follow-up without scouting, which means that he has an even cooler follow-up planned. Uh, I don't remember exactly what follow-up he did, but this follow-up is probably something you can copy. Look at it. I think this was so cool. He's going to mix up the usual build. So you can normally go for like some kind of 2-1-1 follow-up, and you can do the Hellion drop follow-up, and he's going to do both. 
So you can see that barracks is floating over here. It's going to lift it on the reactor. So he's going to go for Hellion Drop, followed by triple marine production. And maybe some two-on-one after that, which is... Honestly, a very cool follow-up that I haven't seen before. But with this, like I said, you can really play around a lot. You can play two racks into mech with battle cruisers. You can play two racks into two on one into bio or two on one into mech even. Like there's so much you can do. And here you can see what I was talking about. There's no link speed. So these Hellions, they're, they're just uncontested. Without link speed, there is simply nothing you can do against this. I think Elasia didn't even make Zerglings. But even if he did, they would be slow Zerglings and they wouldn't be able to do anything. And that's why the Hellion drop is such a good follow-up to proxy racks. Because Elaser had so little drones, if he did commit to mining gas, he, he would not have a lot of minerals, you know. He would have a pretty bad economy at this point. Uh, and even if he did the Hellion drop and he would be able to hold it with Zerglings with speed, he would not have that much economy uh, to follow it up with. So this move is always good, preferably, uh, or I prefer to always do the Hellion drop version because I like it the most. And once again, you can mix these, so you can even go Hellion Drop into BC. As you can see, Milk is going Hellion Drop into 2 on 1. Though he also has a tank with this, and this specific follow up with the tank, guys, this might be suited for the map. Because Curious Minds has a siege position on both the third bases, as you can see here and here. So this specific follow up with the tank might just be for this map. Uh, but it could also work on other maps, because you can see, you know, Stim is almost finished. If you don't have bailings or like a massive amount of queens, you're not going to be able to do too much against that. Now Milky is walling off back at home. Uh, now he's going to push. And yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. He's going to siege the tank in that very annoying spot. And Elaser is probably going to have to use his queens to defend it. But if he loses queens, he's not going to have injects and it's just going to be tragic for him. At home, he was already walled off. And even without this push, this game looks amazing for Milky. He's up in workers. He has stim. Plus one combat shields on the way. And the laser is really struggling to get anything going. This is his third base with zero drones on it. Now it doesn't have any units left. And uh, yeah, this I'm going to try this, man. This actually looks dope. This looks even doper than I remember. Like, this is very cool. And you're going to try to snipe that sea shanks, but against Marines with Stim, it's probably not even going to be close. It doesn't even go into the orange health. And just like that, Milky wins. And this game really shows how cool the proxy Turax is. Because, th yeah, this follow-up, I haven't seen it before. And this is... What are we now? 12 years deep into SE2 and there's still new follow-ups. So you have to summarize, guys. Proxy 4 racks, uh, very little strategy. Can beat anyone in the world, but it has some obvious weaknesses. If you play against pool first, one base zergs, uh, there's not much you can do. There's no follow-up. Proxy 3 racks, fantastic mind game. You can either all-in or transition, but you need to do a little bit more damage. Proxy 2 racks, by far the most versatile will probably not kill your opponents fast if that's the goal, but you can be very creative with it. You can do any kind of follow-up you want. You don't need that much damage. And if you like uh, openers that switch up the game a little bit instead of just you know letting the Zerg do whatever they want, then the Proxy 2 is perfect. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this small guide to the Proxy Raxis. Make sure to like the video and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Adios.